what up y'all so i want to talk to you about consent because when you're with the narcissist a lot of times what you're doing is is a lot of times they will ask you questions and get you to consent to things i remember reflecting back now you're talking about somebody who is a witch i mean just think about it what i've learned through all this narcissism stuff is that these guys are witches and warlocks and whether they know it or not they are the embodiment of it because they do not really have 80 percent of control over their body and mind their, their spirit is been hijacked and it's not been anything good in there it's benevolent dark energy demonic however you want to look at it but it's demonic in nature so you have if you have something demonic in nature controlling a vessel and it comes to you as a love partner it's going to be witchcraft the whole embodiment of it and where we go wrong in this world system is through consent it's kind of like when you buy a house you gotta sign a bunch of papers you buy a car you gotta buy sign a bunch of papers when you uh get married you have to sign a bunch of papers <laughs> when you when you get insurance you have to sign papers when you go under contract for a job you have to sign papers when you get hired you gotta sign papers anything that you do in life is consent either by written consent or by verbal consent and that i i just think back to where when i was with the narcissist they would say some weird things where they demanded some sort of an agreement like you know it was not natural and when you do things like have intercourse is consent when you when you when they ask you like binding questions that maybe you don't even know what they were anymore but you probably consented they probably had your consent to things and this is how they were able to hijack you to some degree they had to have your consent so those are things to keep in mind because you want to pray and and cut those you know a lot of people talk about cutting ties and cords energy cords and stuff well you do it by revoking breaking that consent that contract but you can only do that through prayer and talking to the Lord and worshiping him and through meditation and breaking those those things that have that the narcissist has bound you up and they really had a hold of you I mean your mind will and emotions they, they the enemy has been coming to you because you are becoming a threat and that's why he comes to you and I don't care what people say there is a lot of witchcraft out here because lately I've been really understanding more and more about this type of stuff I've been seeing it I mean how it works like what's been really going on I think a lot of witchcraft is in a weird way is kind of like this it's kind of like the enemy the enemy comes for you for your consent and once he gets your consent through the narcissist then he starts to take control and hijack you because you were going into covenant with them and he's trying to get you off track dog doesn't chase a parked car chases one that's doing something and that's why the enemy's coming after you because you're doing stuff but y'all you gotta quit giving consent you need to revoke that consent so what i wanted to say is the the, the enemy i'm starting to believe that the enemy and witchcraft is is operating from god's old testament standards you remember what they would do they would before christ came they would uh do sacrifices for their forgiveness of sins and they would they would do things like that and it seems like that's what the enemy's doing he's working off of god's old testament covenants to some degree 
and that's why there is power in them, but not if you, but now they've been Christ's game. So if you're a believer in Christ, then being a believer in Christ, it has no power over you. Unless if you, but if you don't believe in Christ, it would, because it still holds power. But it does not hold power. So when Christ came, it's like all of that sacrificial stuff, as far as like, of a carcass. Christ took all that and bared it on the cross. I think it goes back to before Christ covenants and rules, old world. And they're still operating under that. But it has no power over you if you're in Christ. And the other thing is, is, is fear. You need to have walk in, you're either walking in fear or faith. If you know the Lord and you walk in fear, then how much faith do you have? Because you want to be controlled by faith and not fear of what the enemy's going to do. Listen, this stuff's not spoken of in church because these days all the churches, a lot of these pastors and stuff have been part of the worship of the enemy. But you know, at the end of the day, if we're supposed to do what Christ did, then shouldn't we be in like small groups instead of churches? And the problem with us, if we really want to be effective, we need to really put sin away. Because sin is what's, what, what is going to kill our power through the Lord. Because for us to truly glow up, we have to be sanctified. That's where our power comes from. Sanctification through the Spirit. And if we have sanctification through the Spirit and putting our sin away, our worship goes where our fuel goes. That's where our worship goes. And I'm talking to myself first, so these are just things dawning on me and things that are becoming more and more important to me. And this is, I'm the one directing this channel, so I want y'all to know the truth of what I know. But truly for us to be successful, it's through Christ. And the enemy, I believe, is working through witchcraft. That is basically the old things that some of the things we don't even know about because they're not even probably in the Word, but they're kind of like manipulations of Old Testament and before Christ's covenants that, that used to be the rulership of power. And after Christ came, he bared it all on the cross. So now it's obsolete to God with his chosen people. But the enemy still uses it because that's the only power he has to work in. And actually to work in that type of power now would be in rebellion. So that would be appropriate for him. And he doesn't create anything. He just takes whatever God allows him to. And a lot of times God allows him to take whatever is left. See, you should be sitting at the king's table with the Lord because you're one of his saints. But what we did is we put the, we put the narcissist at the, at the king's table and we're sitting there scrummaging around underneath the table trying to get the crumbs that fall off the, the king's table with the narcissist sitting there. What you need to do is you need to dethrone the narcissist by kicking him out of your head, kicking him out of your life, blocking him everywhere, and going no contact. You need to get up off of crawling around under the king's table and you need to knock the narcissist off their chair at the king's table and take your and your take your royal spot back. You're the rightful owner to that to that throne. But now you don't just get that throne just by just by ownership per se, but you have to start operating in cleanliness and obedience and faith and not fear. You know, Peter could walk on water until he started to hear that water rummaging around under his feet and looking around and seeing the storm in front of his face. But when he was had his eyes set on Christ, he didn't fear. It was when he looked away that he started to sink. See, 
so I'll let them vape y'all and not beer. But they want your consent. sex with people. <laughs> you need to be vigilant and guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it come the issues of life. How do you, you know, people talk about glowing up. How do you glow up? The best way to glow up is to eat the word, y'all. Where does it all come from? It comes from inside validation. When you read the word, it goes in. And it will shine out. something happened with the fall of the enemy because it's almost like they need our fuel in this world system that's why they always drive the vibration down it's kind of like we're all generators and hell has no light man the, the, the energy plant God cut the power lines to hell and the only way they can get fuel is through humanity Anything fallen can only get fuel through humanity because they're not getting it from God. And hell is right beneath us, under the earth. They can't even reach heaven. And heaven knows there's no consent. The only way they can get fuel is through humanity and our consent and our fear. So they pump fear through the news all day. They have you watching all these shows where everybody's getting murdered, killed, and shot down dead. There's wars everywhere. There's famines. There's all kinds of earthquakes and things going on. And if you watch that crap on a daily basis, you're going to walk in fear. But where is that energy going? It's going to fuel the enemy's kingdom. When you fear, they pump all of that fuel from us. It, it energetically goes to the power lines of hell and turns the lights back on. It fuels them up. It pumps up their ego. All them fallen ones. And then they send them, they get sent out as pompous devils to take a, to take down God's people. So give no consent. Don't watch that crap and don't listen to nothing negative for real, y'all. Because all that stuff is getting funneled. The only good news is Christ.